Greetings to all. Greetings to the United Holy Land fans. I am honored to be invited by UHLF to talk about Project Loving Care. And I am grateful too. Project Loving Care in this year is 50 years old, right? It was born in 1968 and in 2018 that makes 50 years old. This is young and this is old too. This project, Project Loving Care, or as we call it in Arabic, Project Rihaya, is very close to my heart, very dear to me. When we started it, we did not think, we did not expect that that much, really, that it would become what it has become, that it would even live uh, as long as it has lived. It started very humbly, very obscurely actually. It started uh, because, frankly, I and my wife were shall I say, selfish. What happened in 1967 to the Palestinians in Palestine at the hands of the Israeli made awful effects all over and we felt it even from here, Kokomo, Indiana. Many were orphaned, many children were orphaned, and destitution was doubled or tripled. Of course, the Palestinians had been living uh, in, in very destitute uh, 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 situations before what the Israelis did in 1967. Uh, anyway, when it reached us, I mean myself and my wife, we felt that the, the thing to do was to adopt some children, three or four children. And we tried. Uh, immediately we ran into the wholesome tradition that, that, that is uh, um, orphans, are not given up for adoption, and that they, they instead they are taken care of by the family, the immediate family, if not by their uh, cousins, by their uncles, if not by further relatives. But adoptions, no. Okay, so. Uh, We thought that we should help. If we can't adopt, let us help. And we said, my wife and I, the best thing to do would be to render assistance to the people who were most hurt living in Palestine. Help them financially and help, help them morally. How could we do this? Well, to launch a program that would uh, uh, bring to the attention of the community here, lo locally at the beginning, of course, of the community, uh, to what, what was happening to the Palestinian people, especially the needy and the those who were hurt immediately 
by Israelis or by uh, nature. That is to say, children who became, who lost their parents, especially the father, the breadwinner. How could we get them support? Uh, the first thing we did, my wife and I, was to look for people on the other side in Palestine who would be able to help, to help identify the needy family uh, with its children. See, here we were supposed to find people who would help and there they would find people who need the help. Uh, we contacted the Red Crescent Society at the time and we were introduced to or referred to uh, Mrs. Nahla Asali, who lives in, in Jerusalem. She also agreed wholeheartedly to, the, our, to our project, to Project Loving Care, and uh, uh, she, of course, found volunteers who would help her identify families. Uh, and the, you know, we started. We here, uh, the Greater Kokomo Association of Churches helped us at the beginning. The university where I taught helped a little bit by giving us moral assistance, really. And um, we advertised the program in the local paper, and we began to find. Uh, people who were ready, ready to help. The help was to, to sponsor the child, to sponsor the needy child financially. And at, at the start it was the, the, the sponsor would sponsor a child uh, for $10 a month for as long as he or she wished for a year, for two, for, uh, and sometimes the, we had sponsors who would have more than one child. They would sponsor two or three children sometimes, and uh, the, the children would be given, uh, uh, the children and their family would send information about the child who is to receive the help. Uh, information about the family and picture of the child and you know <clears throat> we encouraged the uh, the the uh, the sponsors and the sponsored to communicate with each other and we were of course willing to forward letters and pictures and we forwarded the contributions. Uh, we publicized the, 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 the project uh, 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 in quickly, really, in after, uh, outside our Kokomo community. We, we had people to help us all over the country in no time. And the sponsors began to grow in number. And my wife, Hannah, uh, she passed away, of course, later. My wife, Hannah, and I uh, took on, uh, you know, to, to, uh, to uh, take care of the administration here and the communication with the uh, uh, Red Crescent Society and Nahda Asali in, in Jerusalem. The program. Uh, uh, prospered and continued to grow and uh, we really had hundreds of children uh, uh, sometimes we would have hundreds of children who were receiving uh, 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 this aid uh, we continued to work 
to this, my wife and I, Hannah and I, until I believe 1991, 92, and then my wife fell ill, and of course we couldn't do more. Okay, now our sponsor, uh, our sponsorship program, this time needed itself needed to be sponsored, and who came to our aid? United Holy Land Fund. United Holy Land Fund uh, took the program and was willing to uh, to administer it, and uh, and uh, ever since it it, it has uh, done so much for it that we cannot express enough gratitude to this great organization. Uh, for, as I said, for 50 years, and the program is prospering, the, pros the program is doing better and, and better. And uh, what shall I say? Uh, people tell me, well, what about the rest of the country? I said, well, we can do, we are not in politics, we are in doing humanitarian uh, 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 deeds. We are helping. If you help one child, you have done enough. But we have helped many more. And once again, uh, I wish to, uh, to express on behalf of all those children who have been receiving help for so many years, I wish to express my deep gratitude to the United Holy Land Foundation. And thank you very much.